a question that often looms large on the minds of students and uh, people in general is uh, this that uh, what is case law like is it some different species of law is it distinguishable from the law that we already generally know of the answer is it is no different species of law in fact it is part of the law that exists a case law is a part of the law that exists so here the difference is in fact that of the legis legislatively enacted law and judicially pronounced law the legislatively enacted law is interpreted by the superior courts in our country and whatever legal principles are established uh, therein become the case law which has to be given more importance than the existing law itself now on what basis do I say so? Justice Rohinton Fali Nariman in one of his enlightening lectures says it all. He refers to Article 245 of the Indian Constitution and if you read the provisions content therein, you will find that the parliament has the power to make law for the whole of the territory of India or any part thereof and the legislature of the state has the power to make law with respect to the whole of the territory of the state or any part thereof. Whereas Article 141 of the Constitution says that the law declared by the Supreme Court is binding on all the courts of India. It means making of the law, mind you the words, making of the law and declaring of the law. Making of the law as Article 245 indicates is the function of the legislature. In our country at the union level it is the parliament and at the state level it is the state legislature which is responsible for making laws. And going by the provisions of article 141 the power or the function of declaring law is that of the judiciary particularly the supreme court. The interpretation of law is accorded finality by the decisions or pronouncements made by the supreme court in our country. This has been the practice all along. So, the whenever a law is to be applied by the law enforcement agencies, they have to cast a look at the law as it exists made by the legislature and also more importantly, they have to give attention or pay attention to the law settled by the judiciary. I will give you example one from a foreign jurisdiction and another from our own indigenous jurisdiction. For example, the fifth, fourth and fifth amendment of the American constitution. Fourth amendment of the American constitution which is part of the bill of rights of the American people says that all the American people have the right to be secure in their persons, houses, etc. to be secure against unreasonable searches and seizure. And more importantly, amendment five of the American constitution says that no person shall be compelled to be a witness against himself in a criminal case and further no person shall be deprived of his life, liberty and property without due process of law. Now in a particular case and the name of the case is Miranda versus Arizona which was decided by the American Supreme Court in the year 1966. In this case, the American Supreme Court while interpreting the amendment 5 of the American constitution says that since a person is not supposed to be compelled to be a witness against himself in a criminal case and nor is he supposed to be deprived of his life and personal liberty without due process of law. Therefore, in a genuine case, if the law enforcement agencies, namely the police, proceed to arrest a person, the police has a responsibility. So said the Supreme Court, the police have a responsibility to say it out loud to the person who is going to get arrested that sir you are being arrested on the following charges. Secondly, you have a right to remain silent or speak whatever you may say will be used against you in a court of law and you have a right to remain silent or speak and you have a right to consult a lawyer of your choice if you cannot afford one one will be made available to you at government's expense. So mind you the law as it exists says that no person shall be a compelled to be a witness against himself. The law that exists in the Consti American constitution says that no person shall be deprived of his life and personal liberty, ex personal liberty without due process of law. And the case law 
in the form of Miranda versus Arizona is what that a person shall be informed of his rights first that you are being arrested on the following charges you have a right to remain silent you have a right to speak if you say anything that may be used against you in a court of law and if you have a, and you have a right to consult a lawyer if you are not capable of consulting or affording one one will be made available to you at government's expense so every time the law enforcement agencies will have to keep both these things in mind the american constitution the law contained therein and the law settled by the american supreme court by way of miranda versus arizona if any arrest takes place in america in violation of the law settled in miranda versus arizona the courts have a bounden duty to declare that arrest as unconstitutional unconstitutional and the detainee is hence uh, is uh, forthwith released by the courts i give you further example from our own indigenous jurisdiction for example in indian penal code there is section 498 capital a which contains provisions regarding punishment for cruelty perpetrated upon a woman by either her husband or the relatives of the husband for anything like demand for dowry cruelty can be perpetrated upon a woman now schedule 1 of the crpc 1973 which uh, contains classification of offenses says that section 498 cruelty upon a woman is a cognizable offense it means it means according to the terms of the crpc that an investigating officer who is in charge of the case who is investigating the case has every right to arrest immediately the person against whom the complaint has been made means the husband or his relatives can be the relatives of the either the husband or the relatives of the husband can be immediately arrested by the investigating officer but here is a case law as pronounced by the supreme court a decision given by the supreme court which is to be followed by the law enforcement agencies namely police is what in rajesh sharma versus state of uttar pradesh in 2017 the supreme court has said that no immediate arrest shall happen in section 498a cases every state government at the district level is required to set up a family welfare committee comprising of eminent people of the local area and that uh, family welfare committee will consider the case section 498a related complaint will be considered first by the family welfare committee and only on the recommendation of the family welfare committee of the district can an investigating officer or a judicial magistrate issue order for arrest of the person so here the law is section 498a read with schedule 1 of the crpc that if a person has perpetrated any cruelty upon his wife arrest him immediately and the settled law or the case law as pronounced vidya the rajesh sharma versus state of up case in 2017 is what that do not arrest him first refer his matter to the review committee family a uh, welfare committee only on the recommendation of that family welfare committee can a person be put behind bars otherwise not so the point is that the uh, the legislatively enacted laws are important but the case laws which set out the principles governing that law is more important the case law the principles settled therein has to be more complied with by the law enforcement agencies and the people in general as well so case laws in fact control the existing laws they have upper hand over the existing laws though they are not different from the executive existing laws they are only an interpretation but they control the meaning of the existing law and that's why in terms of their application they are more important than the existing laws themselves thank you